wake up, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. You're the true children of Israel, man. And it's time to recognize these things, man, and understand that, guess what? This world is fashioned to pass away, man. It's waxing old and it's waxing old, right? It's falling apart before your eyes. And if you're still clinging on to this place, you're going to be destroyed right with it. Right, what's going on, brothers? How y'all doing? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord real quick, man? All right, man. If y'all come back, remember, y'all Israelites, repent, keep the commandments in these last days, right? So, what we got to understand is our people are too busy running to and fro and want to deal with the philosophies and the ways of this world, man. Right? Instead of really understanding that, guess what? This world is waxing old. It's waxing worse and worse. And it is fashion to pass away. And if, you know, brothers don't really take heed, right? If they don't take heed to the words of the Most High, then they will definitely be put to death in these last days, man. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, man. The Lord is bringing his judgments every day. And it's time to be in the mode of repentance and actually being content with the things that are in the world. I mean, uh, and, and, and the things that are, are, are presented before you in the Word and serving the Most High, man, and separating from the world, man. All right, you got a precept? Go ahead. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 17. All right. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. See that? The world passing away, man. Surely. It is passing away, but guess what? If you're doing the will of the Most High, guess what? You're going to live. Because Baruch tells us, man, he that keepeth the commandments shall find life, man, but he that leave it is going to be put to death, man. And that's all it is in this world is death. All you see is diseases. All you see is danger around every corner, man. Mass shootings, right? What's going on, brother? You got a couple minutes here the words of the Lord, man? I know it. Uh, you know it, hey. You're out here buying and selling on a Sabbath, man. You got to repent. Keep the commandments, King. You're an Israelite. Right? So, we got to understand, man. Hey, everywhere you go in this world, everything that's presented is contrary to the Most High God. Right? Everything is contrary, man. And a lot of us spend so much time wanting to delve into so much that's going on in the world with the distractions. Right? You got... Uh, the little submarine deal going on, man. You got NBA trades that everybody's talking about right now. The NFL season that's coming up. Everybody's distracted, man. You got celebrity uh, 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 marriage uh, 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 matches and, and, and folly and foolishness going on, man. You know, everybody want to be clubbing and hanging out on the Sabbath and, you know, looking for the next, you know, late, right? But the Lord said, man, you got to be done with what's going on in the world and follow me. Do the things that, that will present you blameless before the Most High, man. Which is keeping the commandments of the Most High. And in this world, you have to be completely content. Give me um, uh, um, um, Philippians 4 and 11. Real quick, Philippians 4 and 11. You have to seriously be content with what's going on and what you have in the world. You can't be thinking about always chasing the bag man getting overtime working on the sabbath man right or even stressing about certain bills and and, and, and what people think about you man. and what you got going on in the world man because like i said all this stuff that you can see with the naked eye is soon to be ash right and burnt up in nuclear fire man what's going on brother you got a couple minutes here the words come on and hear the words man right read what you got huh this is the book of Philippians, chapter 4, and verse 11. Right. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. To be what? To, to be, be content. content. So whatever state you're in, man, be content with it, man. Be humble and be okay with whatever you have. You shouldn't have to worry about wanting to keep up with the Joneses all the time. You shouldn't worry about what's up getting the next big uh the new car new vehicle that's coming out man or the joneses that live next door man you got to get that pool that they got man or the next jordans that's coming off the line right or building up a career for 50 years down the line to set up big trust funds for your children 
Lord willing, we ain't going to be here that long, man. We're hastening to the coming of the Son of Man. That's why we're crying, sighing every day. Praying and not giving the most high rest, man. Throwing curses on this place, man, and this place go down, man. Eventually, man, the missiles are going to hit this place, man. But the Lord said be content with everything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, sister? You can hear the words of the Lord real quick? Hey, what? What's, what's, what's this brother's nationality right here? Caucasian? If he is, sister, you gotta separate, man. Love that's your right. own. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's all right. You can flip us off if you want to. The missile's gonna blow you up. That's right. That's right. All right? That's all that is. The sister's always gonna deal. I think it's green. The grass is green on the other side. But they gonna find out that that grass gonna be burnt up real soon, man. Our sisters is bugged out, man, with that stuff nowadays, man. Well, guess what? That sister's not content with the life that she had and that she that she was born into. She thinks the grass is green on the other side. Right? And it's a problem. Right? But, hey, the Lord said, man, you better, hey, man, be humble. Understand what you got going on right now. And be happy with that because guess what? Soon it's going to go away, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to know what's going on in the world and prepare yourself. What's going on, family? I got a couple of minutes to hear the words of the Lord real quick. I know y'all got five minutes, man. What's going on? What's y'all's nationality? Nationality. Don't run off, sisters. What's going on? Why is y'all why giggling? Every time the sisters walk up, they giggle when we ask that question. What, what's the problem? What's your nationality? Meaning your race. Oh. African American, you two sisters, you're African Americans, right? So y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Y'all ever heard of the Israelites before? What y'all know about the Israelites? Back in your school years, right? So y'all ain't y'all don't go to church or nothing like that, huh? Which is good. I mean, you know, the church ain't teaching you nothing. You know what I'm saying? But but what we got here to tell you is the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the children of Israel, the, the ones that the Bible speaks about. And the Bible is actually our history book, right? That's right. We always hear that concept of the white man wrote the Bible. No, that's a lie. This book consists of history, archaeology, and prophecy that shows who these people truly are. Right? And we're going to go and give you a couple, of, just a couple of scriptures before you go to prove who we are, right? So let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Y'all ever heard of Moses, right? I heard of Moses, right? So what's Moses famous for? Do y'all remember what he's famous for? Right, so when he went to Egypt, what was his famous saying? Let my people go, right? Because when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were captive under the Egyptians. They were enslaved, right? Right, so you know what I'm saying? This is the time that we're going to read when Moses was sent by the Most High God to retrieve the Israelites out of captivity, right? So, go ahead and read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Right. And it reads, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses, all these, what? All all these, these curses, curses right? shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is the time when Moses had brought the children of Israel out of the captivity of Egypt, right? And they're in the wilderness right now. And they're on the Mount Sinai, right, receiving the commandments of the Most High God. So the Lord said, look, on one hand, if you hearken or you listen to me and keep my commandments, I'm going to set you above everybody on the earth, right? But on the other hand, if you do not hearken to my commandments, I'm going to curse you, right? So it's sad to say that the children of Israel refused to listen to the Most High, right? So guess what? Curses were laid upon the people, right? And we're going to show you a curse real quick that was laid upon these people, right? Go to 46 real quick. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Right, so these curses is going to be on this people for a sign to indicate who these people are. And upon their seed forever, meaning generation after generation, generation, these curses are going to reoccur. Right, so go back to verse 16. Right, read on. Verse 16. 
Cursed shall thou be in the city, right? And cursed shall thou be in the field. So wherever these people would go, any city that they wind up in, they will be cursed in the cities, right? So if you go anywhere in America or even around the world, what people are placed in impoverished areas, in the so-called ghettos, the slums, on all the section eight, the food stamp, gang banging, uh, low income, low um, education, things like that. Who would you say is in those areas? Hmm? Black people, right. And he also said, cursed shalt thou be in the field. Who was cursed in the cotton field picking cotton? Right, sugar cane, watermelon, from sun up to sun down, right? And even so now in the work field today, you work so hard, 60, 50 hours a week, and you come home with a little check, right? And your pockets is flat by two days later, paying all these bills and things like that, right? That would be the so-called black man, right? Hispanic man and Native American man, right? He said these would be curses on this people, which is the Israelites, right? And I'm gonna give you two more major curses to show you, right? Give me 54. I ain't gonna hold you too long. Give me 54. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. So the Lord said your eye is now going to be evil towards your brother. Because we used to be, guess what, a tender and delicate people. Now your eyes going to be evil towards your brother. What does that sound like? That's right. Say that again, brother. Look at that. That brother in the spirit, man. That's exactly what's going on. Even so much so that they put a name on it. Because you don't hear no white on white crime. You don't hear Japanese on Japanese crime. You hear what? Black on black crime. That's a curse placed on our people, right? Read on. And toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Which he shall what? Which, which he, he shall, shall leave. leave. Who was known for leaving their kids, man? Happen generation after generation after generation. Now, question not all of us, but question did y'all grow up with y'all's father in the house? No, nope. no, nope. see that you did. That's good, brother. That's all, that's all praise for the most high. A lot of us did, right? That's one out of four, exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's a curse, right? I'm gonna give you this major curse. This is the last curse right here, right? That's good. That's that's all praise for the most high. You breaking that curse, right? You're trying to, right? So this is the last curse right here, right? Read that. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So remember, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were what? Slaves. Remember, right? So check it out. When the Lord, he got it right here. So when the Lord talks to his people, right, remember, he's our father. So he what, when he speaks to us, he speaks to us in similar to, right? Something that is uh, similar to what he was speaking about. Like if I said to you, don't go around that corner because there's some bullies over there and you might get Debo. What am I telling you? Watch out. Yeah, watch out, because what? He go do what? He known for what? He known for jacking, you know what I'm saying? But you understand that. Everybody else not going to understand that. But the Heavenly Father speaks to us the similar to it. So when he says Egypt, right, that word actually means between a rock and a hard place, right? Or between two straits, right? Meaning it's a captivity. So when he's telling you, I'm going to send you into Egypt again, he's telling you what? I'm going to send you into another captivity again, right? So I'm going to prove that real quick. Read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Right. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. See that? So he said, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when we read this passage, when he says Egypt, think of bondage or slavery in your mind. Okay? So read that one more time. Verse 68 from the top. Listen up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So I'm going to ask you a question. How did our people get to this side of the world? No. What mode of transportation did we take? No. From Africa or wherever to here, a boat, right? So remember that. We took a boat. Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery again. With ships. With what? With ships. The Lord said, I'm going to put you back into another slavery on ships, right? So, anybody in the world, any race of people, who went into slavery on ships? We did. Did anybody else go into slavery on ships? Nobody. 
So, read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, right. thou shalt see it no more again. So we haven't seen a homeland again, right? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. So your what? Unto your enemies. Right. For bond men and bond women. Right. And no man shall buy you. So when we got here, who did we get sold to? White people. What did the Bible just call? Read that part again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What the Lord say? To your enemies. So he said those white folks and those other nations are your enemies. And he said you're going to be sold for slave men and slave women and nobody's going to buy you. Right? Because we're still here today in our captivity. Now we had people try to raise up and get us out of here or even give us equality. Like Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, right? So on and so forth. Black Panthers, all the marching and all that. Justice, no peace type stuff. But nobody prevailed because what he said, the Lord said, nobody was going to get us out of here, right? So guess what? These people went to slavery on slave ships, and they're cursed people. Who was he talking to in this in this in this book? No, he went to receive who out of Egypt? The Israelites, right? So if he's talking to the Israelites. And these curses equate to the people today, meaning us, who would that make us? Say that again? That's right, right? That's right. We would be right. the people of the Bible. He's right. talking to us. No other people can pick this Bible up and, and, and relate to these curses. Right. Can't no white man pick that up and say, hey man, my people went to slavery on ships. We were sold, right? We're cursed in the cities. Right? We grow up in fatherless homes, things like that. They can't equate to that. The Asian man came, the Arab man came, the East Indian man came, none of that. We are the only ones that can equate to that. So that would make us the Israelites. I'm going to give you one more curse. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Right? Listen to this. Right? Read it. This book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, so discontinue from the heritage that I gave thee, right. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. See that? So he's saying, look, I'm going to cause you to discontinue from your heritage, right? Your heritage is what? Your customs, your language, right? The things you ate, right? The way you dressed. All these things were stripped from a people, the Israelites. So guess what? What people is walking around the world calling themselves after different names, right? Us, black, African American, nigger, moor, negro, all these different five words were given to us because the Lord said that was going to happen. I'm going to cause you to take, I'm going to take away your inheritance where you won't even know who you are anymore. Ain't nobody else on this planet saying that you can ask a Chinese man, hey man, where you from? I'm from China. My people come from Beijing. My people go back to the Ming Dynasty. So and so, so and so. They can always tell you where they go back to. But us, what we say? Uh, I'm from Africa. Well, Africa's a continent. What country do you come from in Africa? That's 54 countries in Africa. Does anybody know where you come from? Africa's a continent. There's 54 countries in Africa. What country do you come from? See that? See that? So guess what? These are the people in the Bible, the Israelites are our ancestors, right? So knowing that, we have to understand that we got to come back to our gods. I'm going to give you this last piece of, give me Deuteronomy. How y'all doing? Y'all not looking good tonight. Y'all come hear this word real quick. Y'all Latino women, y'all Latinas, yeah, it's about you too. Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the true children of Israel. You are the biblical Israelites. Right? Keep the commandments of the Most High God and repent in these last days, man. That's right. Right? This world is about to go to hell. Christ is coming back to save his people. Right? The black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man. We got to repent and keep the commandments, man, in these last days. Right? So I'm going right. to this last piece. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Right? So understanding that we know now that we're Israelites, there's something that's required of us. Right? So read that. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and verse 12. Right? And it reads, it says, And now, Israel, right. what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Right. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, right. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. 
to keep the commandments, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So the Lord said we got to keep the commandments, right? So before y'all leave, do y'all know any commandments? Any commandments of the Lord? No. Uh, not at all. So question, do y'all eat pork? Y'all eat bacon and stuff like that? You know that's a commandment that we're not supposed to eat that? See that? Right, read that. Leviticus 11 and 7. God will show you, sister, because we love you, right? And we can't suffer sin upon our people. And this is what we out here to show us where we've been going off, where we've been sinning, and how we need to come back to the Most High God, right? So read that, gang. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Right. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. Right. Though he divide the hook and be cloven footed, yet he toy not the good. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. See, the Lord said, guess what? The pig or the pork is unclean to you. Right? Y'all listen up. Right? The pig is unclean to you. You know why it's unclean? Because the pig was created to clean the earth. The pig is going to eat anything that's on the earth. Disgusting. Right? Dead carcasses, feces, whatever. Right? And when that pig eats, he doesn't chew his, his food properly. He doesn't digest it. So whatever he eats, it keeps it in his body. Right? So whenever you eat that pig, you eat whatever it is eating. And also the pig's saliva is, is um, about seven times toxic than a, a venomous snake. Right? See, we don't know stuff like that, man. But they'll take it, they'll cut it up, and they'll send it to you to eat it because they want to destroy you. Right? So we got to get rid of these things, man. You can't eat the pig anymore. So you love God, right? Yeah. So are you willing to put down that pork? You could, well, hey, good, make that choice today. You know what I'm saying? Make that choice to put it down. Because that's how you show you love God. The Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? So that's how you show God you love him. You can't just say, I love you. The love, the word love is an action word, right? If you're going to love somebody, you have to show them that you love them, right? So if you love the most high, keep the commandments. And I got one more for you because I see on both of you sisters, right? Give me one, Captain. Yeah, uh, seafood, yeah, read that one, finish that. This is Leviticus chapter nine, 11 and verse 9. Right. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Right. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So y'all eat seafood, shrimp, crab, lobster, anything like that? Read that again. Verse 9 from the top. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Right. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So whatever comes out of the water, it has to have fins and scales. Right? So what has fins and scales? Fish. You have abundance of, you know, different kinds of fish you can eat. But what doesn't have fins and scales? Shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish, things like that, right? What's going on, brother? Got a couple minutes here to words of the Lord, okay? Like like right? So uh, you and Israelite keep the commandments, man. Right? So you got to put that, that, that script down, man. That them crab legs, that lobster, you got to put it down. You love the Lord, right? You got to put it down. How y'all sisters doing? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord real quick? I know y'all got about five minutes. Yeah. Right? Come on, I'll pray to the most high, right? We're going to finish up these ladies and we're going to get with y'all. Right? this brother. Right? So, so, I got one more commandment for you too, and then I got one for you, brother. Read that. This book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Right. And it reads, it says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for, for the dead. Right. Nor print any marks upon you. Lord, what? I didn't know that, did you? You got you got you got tattoos too? <laughs> yeah. It's for everybody. If you got tattoos on your body, that's a sin. But guess what though? Y'all didn't know that, right? You didn't know that. No, I did. I did. You I did. did? So you did it anyway. But my tattoos are not. Yeah. You ain't supposed to be having no tattoos, period, though, bro. Right. That's the law said that, man. It don't matter what it is, it ain't supposed to be on your body, man. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Since you didn't know that, the Lord is gonna have mercy on you, right? Read this. It's the book of Acts, chapter 19, it's like a chapter 17 and verse 30. Right. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. He what? God winked at. Right. 
But now, commanded all men everywhere to repent. So the time of your ignorance when you didn't know, the Lord winked at that. He was like, all right, you know, they didn't know. It's all good. But now that you're standing before the men of the Lord and you're receiving that understanding, now there's no more excuse. How y'all sisters doing? Y'all got a couple of minutes to hear the words of the Lord? This is for y'all too, sisters. Right? Don't say that. Just come on back and hear the word. Right? Repent, keep the commandments. Right? So, now, y'all can't put any more marks on your body. I ain't got no tattoos either, do you, sister? I got plenty. Well, now you get up, and now you know it's a sin. So now you can't do it. Hey, but yeah, that means now that you know, you got to put that sin away. But if you see, if you know you're sinning, right, that means you got to let it go, right? That means you got to what? Repent, right? Right? So that don't mean sin willfully. Right? Read what you got. This is the book of Hebrews. Chapter 10 and verse 26. Right? For if we sin willfully. What the Lord say? For if we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. So there's no excuse for that. Right? This is the New Testament. This is Hebrew. Right? It said if you sin willfully, then there remains no more sacrifice for you. That would mean it's like Christ didn't die for you. Right? Because now you know that there's a sin to get tattoos. If you continue to do it, that means Christ didn't come to die for you. Right? So now you have to what? Say, I'm not going to do that anymore. No more tattoos for me. I got tattoos on my arms too. Yes, man. I was 19 years old though. I'm 37 now. So that's behind me. I repented from that. You know what I'm saying? So I had to put that away. But we got to give the understanding to our people because guess what? We all are sin, like you said. Right, give me 1 John uh, 1 and 8. I'm going to show you something though. Real quick. Right, read that. Look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. Right. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So if we are here saying we ain't sinning, then we lying. Right? But listen, read up. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, right. and the truth is not in us. Right. If we confess our sins, if we what? If confess, we confess our, our sins, sins. Right. he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Right, so we got to confess it and put it away, right? So that's what it is. We can't be out here saying, well, everybody's sin. Well, guess what? Yes, we do. Well, guess what? The Lord said, give me that just man for real quick. 24, 16. I'm saying now. No, you, you ain't. Drink. Hey, here That's you go. That's not a sin. You can drink. You just can't be a drunkard. Hey, hey, don't run from the truth. No, sis. This for you. This for you, sis. I know. I'm going to the church. I'm going to preach. Yeah, she's a preacher. Hey, but hey, guess what? Did he tell you to keep the commandments, though? Oh, hey, did, did he teach you how to keep the commandments? Well, why are you not keeping them right now? See that? Now that's all. Actually, we can judge. It's in the Bible. I can't, and I'm judging you right here because I'm telling you I love you to put that sin away. Well, oh, so you just willfully sinning, right? But you see, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, when I get to Sisters, y'all just make sure that y'all repent, okay? And keep the and, and I got a question for you before you I leave. Like I like to go to Bob. 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 No just remember. How is how do you repent? Good. Oh, so how do you repent though? Yeah, how do you repent? Can I use this to say because I have not Sure, ideas. sure. As long as you use the information, it's all yours, sister. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have a good night. Now, before you leave, you gotta understand how to repent. Yeah, you on film, it's okay. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, come on. You know I ain't lying. No, now. That's you know what I ain't lying. They did not get my consent. I mean, but you walked up there in the film session, though. It's okay. Well, like I said, you and Israelite repent, sisters. Keep the commandments, okay? All right, thou six. Right? All people, man, these be going off, man. She's just a sinful, 
willful sinner. Yeah, silly does, man. That's crazy, man. But nevertheless, man, you know, that's our people, man. And we still out here to reprove our people, man. Right? Because the Lord said if we love our people, man, then guess what? We got to suffer no sin upon them. Right. Right? And give them the truth, whether they were here or whether they were forbear. Y'all sisters, come on over here because y'all y'all trying to dip on around. Y'all come over here real quick. Sisters, y'all come over here real quick. Give me two minutes, two minutes right? Sisters, two two minutes, minutes, sisters. Just right? Y'all ain't got a couple minutes for the Lord? All right, let's, let us just give you flyers. We, all, we have all day. Oh, well, come on then. You missing the opportunity. Repent, keep the commandments, y'all Israelites, sisters, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This madness, man. Our, our people are bugged out, man. Many ways than one, you know? But it's okay, though, you know? Even the heathen would rather stop by, you know, rather than our people, man, because they don't want to hear it. Right, give me, um, uh, uh, Zechariah 11 and 1, 7 and 11, I think. 7 and 11, that's why I said 7 and 11, right? What's going on, brother? You got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord? See that? That's what our people do, man. That's what they do. They don't want to hear the truth. Right, Zechariah 7 and 11, I think that's what I want. Right, read that. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 11, and it reads, but they refused to hearken. They what? They refused to hearken. Right. And pulled away the shoulder. Right. And stopped their ears that they should not hear. And that's our people, man. They refused to hearken, man. They want to pull away the shoulder, man, and stop their ears, man. And they say they know everything. They know it all. They understand it all. They got God, right? What's going on, sisters? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord real quick? Right? Y'all Israelites, repent, keep the commandments, man. All right? Boy, our people, boy, I tell you, man. They, 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 like I said, man, they worried about what's going on in the world, man. Right? The temptation is all around them, man. It's all around them. But every time you speak to our people, you tell them, man, about the Lord. I know the Lord. I know I got God in me. I know the Lord. But yet you fall it in all these, your eyes is leading you into certain temptations that's drawing you away from the most high man and i understand we all fall but guess what man you got to get back up and understand man when the world when the lord is calling you man hey guess what you got to answer that call it's not often that you see men out on the streets in 10 o'clock at night preaching the word of the most high man that's peculiar and hey guess what if I was walking around in the world, even in the world, and I can say that for myself and be certain, I would stop and listen. Because you're in the midst of sin where everybody's clubbing and hanging around, drinking and, 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 and smoking weed and doing everything else. And you got brothers out here with Bibles, reading and teaching. And you just pass them by like it ain't nothing, man. We've become the spectacle, man upon these nations, man, especially our people. It's strange to our people to see these things, man, and what we do. Right, what's going on, young brothers? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord, man? Y'all believe in God? I got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord, man. All right, all praise to the most high, man. Don't look at each other, man. Y'all gotta be your own man. What's happening, man? So, y'all believe in the Bible, right? All praise to the most high, man. Well, guess what, y'all ever heard of the Israelites before? Israelites, you ever heard of Israelites before? Right? Well, guess what, man? The Israelites of the Bible are what you call the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans today, right? We are the descendants of the people that are in the Bible. Right? You ever heard that the Bible is about Genesis? Yeah, I caught them all. Y'all got a couple minutes in the world of the Lord, man? Yeah, uh, look. Everybody partying tonight, man. They don't want to hear their true nationality. Well, we out here to give back our people their true nationality and tell you, y'all so-called black men, African-American men, right? Y'all be Israelite from the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that Christ comes from, who the world will call Jesus, man. His real name is Yahawashah, man. Right? Jesus is actually your big brother, man. His blood rolls through your veins, man. And he's not this white, man. He actually looks like you. Did you know that? Let me show you real quick in the Bible. Give me a revelation. I'm going to show you that, man. 
and I'm gonna show you that God looks like you too give me days and none. Right? Because we down here to tear down lives, man. Like when you go to church, they tell you, you know, Christ, he loves everybody. Christ looks like this dude right here. All this type of stuff. They try to put the losers in your mind and teach you something that is not real. Because that was made to enslave us as a people. That's right. Right? But the truth is actually in the Bible. That's why they tell you, man. What's going on, brother? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the word of the Lord. And that's why they actually tell you, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if you want to hide something from a nigga, do what? Put it in the book. Ah. Because niggas don't like to read. See that? So now it's time to understand what the truth is about the Bible, right? So read that, Revelation 1 and 13. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1. And, like, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant, John. Right, so the root word of revelation is to reveal, right? So we're about to reveal what Christ actually looked like, right? Jump on down. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, right. clothed with a garment down to the foot, right. and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Right. His head and his head and his hairs were white and woolly, man. Right? So what people on earth have woolly hair? Like a sheep, woolly hair. Put your hand on top of your head. That's woo right there, man. You know what I'm saying? That's woo, afro, right? Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, right? As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right. And his feet, like unto a fine brass. Like what? Like unto a fine brass. What color is brass? B-R-A-S-S. -S. Brass. Yeah, it's a derivative of brown. That's right. So he said he's brown. His feet was like brass. So if you look at the top of your feet, your feet is the same color as the rest of your body, right? 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 So we don't see how dark it was. That's a uh, And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in a burning. That's what? As if they burned in a burning. So he was so dark, it looked like he was burned in a furnace. So Christ was so dark, it looked like he was burned in a furnace. See that? And see, Christ was from where? He was from Nazareth, which is in what? Jerusalem, in Israel, right? And where is Israel located? On the top of Africa. See that? So that's where Christ was from, right? So he's not that guy, he would look like you. Even so the heavenly father, God, who you call God, which his name is Yahweh, he looked like you too, man. Right, give me Revelation 4 and 3. Bring it out. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Right. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So the Ancient of Days is another title for the Most High God, right? Read on. Whose garment was white as snow, right. and did slack it, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Like what? I'm going to read that again. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Right. So look. And this for you too, little sis. This for you too, sis. You believe in the Bible? All right, don't get me your brothers. Huh? You believe in the Bible, little sis? I like Bible. Huh? Huh? You believe in the Bible? Huh? You believe in the Bible? Of course. Of course. Right? So, guess what? You know what you know about the Bible. Look, brothers get distracted, man. The little pretty sister that came around, man. Don't get distracted, man. She can hear this too. This information is about her too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but remember. Brothers, hey, y'all kings walking this earth, man, y'all Israelites, man, what we're out here to tell our people is we have to repent, take back our nationality, right, which was stolen from us, and understand, look, look at this, look, I can't get distracted, that's, that, hey, Satan come through, right, this for you too, sister, this is knowledge for you, see, that's what it is, man. I, the, the, the mind state of our people, man. <clears throat> y'all so easy to distract. Hey, y'all look right. Get the YouTube real quick before y'all walk off, man. Malachi, right. Malachi, give me the YouTube. Wait, right. YouTube, little sis, you're Israelite, okay? You gotta repeat, keep the commandments, okay?
actually specifically meant for one group of people. From the beginning to the end, from Adam, it was a bloodline. From Adam to Seth to so on to so on to so on. And then it got to Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, become the 12 tribes of Israel. And they branched out, which became these people that's still here today. Right? So if you on this sign, your father's a black man, you will be from the tribe of Judah, the that's same right. tribe that Christ comes from. Because right. Christ is a black man. That's right. Did you know that? I'm going to show you that in the Bible too. Revelation, go on there, man. See, that's hey, right. you, you, you can't speak on something until you actually really get in it and get the information, right? So we Get're always out. at that point too. Was like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but until you actually get in to read it, that's when you get to understand, right? Read on. Check it out. Right. The reason why people think that the Bible is a white man's book is because whenever they took us into slavery, yes. they took our book and then they told us only certain parts of this and then they twisted it to fit their narrative and their agenda of controlling us and then they beat us to the point where we didn't even want to read anymore. So they go to the fight and they to control us, not even knowing that this whole thing is talking about us from beginning to end in the first place. That's exactly right. You know what I'm saying? So read that. This is Christ, who you call Christ, not this guy. We gonna play baseball. You play baseball before you heard it three strike rule. Let's play baseball. Read that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter one and one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation is to reveal. So now you got to reveal what Christ looked like, right? Verse 13. And in the midst. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, right. one like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Christ, right? Clothed with a garment down to the foot, right? And girt about the path with a golden girdle. So, first of all, he had a clean white garment on with a golden belt on, right? He was already swagged out, right? Read on. His head and his hair were white like wool. Was what? Were white, white like, like wool. He said his head and his hair was white woolly, right? What people on the earth have woolly hair, man? Right? Read on. As white as snow, right. and his eyes are as a flame of fire, and his feet, and his what? And his feet. So your feet are the same color as your body, right? Read on. Like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Right. Read on. As if it burned in a furnace. As what? As, as if, if it burned in a furnace. He was so dark, he looked like he was burned in the furnace, King. These are your people, man. These are your people, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you, King. You, it's time for us to wake up and get out of that lie. Right? Matter of fact, give me Colossians 2 and 8. I'm going to show you something real quick because just like the brothers bring it out, man, they use the Bible against you because when they got when we got here, what they do, they said you couldn't read. If you got caught reading, what, you get beat, you get killed, your tongue get cut out, whatever. Right? So they didn't allow you to read the text because they knew the power, right, of the text. Right? And so they understood, well, as long as we keep these cats down and keep them in sin, they God can't defend them, man. Right? And if they don't know the information and the power they actually hold, God ain't gonna do nothing for them, man. Right? That's why we walking around calling ourselves niggas, black, you know what I'm saying, African American, Negro, Moor, so on and so forth. Ain't no other race around here calling themselves different names. The white man is what? The white man. The Asian man is the Asian man. You know, Chinese, Chinese, Japanese. We the ones with all the different power. We the ones that been disconnected uh, connected to our heritage, man. Right? But the Lord said this. This is Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Right? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Right? After the tradition of man. Right? After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And what? And not after Christ. So the world, the Lord said, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Stuff that don't have no problem, that, that has nothing to do with you, man. Christianity is not for us, right. right? A Christian just means a follower of Christ. But Christianity was made up by these men, right? right? All these other religions was made up by men. This book is a history book of our people. They used it and put religion on it, right, right to throw you off. Right, so that's why people say, I'm a Christian, I'm this and that. And that, that, that Christian, you don't even know what Christ is, uh, uh, what Christian means. Christian means follow Christ, right? And if you actually follow Christ, you would do what he said in the Bible. You would be keeping the commandments of the Most High God, right? Like Christ was sent here to do. To do the will of the Father. To bring back his people that were lost, right? And bring them back to their nationality and to, their, and to who they truly are. Because you don't understand... You young brothers are actually kings walking this earth, man. That's right. Right? You're royalty walking the earth, man. But we walk around as niggas, thugs, 
you know what I'm saying, black men, this and that. No, man. You know what I'm saying? You actually was and you above everybody. You can do wrong with 76, right? Get out. Right? Do what you got, okay? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. Read this. Want to get the content? Yeah, go ahead. All right, come. I'm going to show you right. what Christ was really like, man. Right. Because right, they'll tell you this guy, he loves everybody. He's flowers and candy and bloody rap. No, that ain't real Christ. Christ is real. Let me show you. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24, uh, 22. Bring it out. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, right. Have mercy on me, O Lord, right. thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Right, so this woman, this is a Canaanite woman, meaning she's a Hamite or an African today, right? So she's out here begging the Lord. She's chasing the Lord. Hey, help me. Help me, Christ. Help me. My daughter is vexed with a devil. She got a demon on her. Help me, right? Read on. But he answered her not a word. Now, this is Christ. If Christ loves everybody, he's so nice. Why he ignore this woman? Right? Read on. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came. His partners, his disciples. And besought him, saying, Send her away. What they say? Send, Send her, her away. away. Even the 12 disciples, like, man, get her away from us. What, what is she doing? Tell her to get out of here, right? Read on. For she cried after us. Right. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Christ only came for Israel, man. These people on this side, man, he only came for you. He only died for you. He done died for everybody on this earth, man. You know what I'm saying? Contrary to what the church tell you, the church tell y'all Christ died for everybody. No, he didn't. The Bible don't say that. Christ himself did not say that. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those right. that are lost calling themselves niggas, blacks, Hispanics, and all these other words that don't actually know who they truly are. That's right, right. right? Christ came for you, man. Right? And he said that you actually above everybody on this earth, man. Right? Read right. that. I'm sure. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Right? For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy means you're separate, right? Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Right? Above all people. Y'all equal to. Above all people. No, we the same, King. Above all people. Right. That are upon the face of the earth. That's God telling you, you above everybody on this earth, man. Think about it, man. Who can hoop like us, man? Who can sing, can dance, can run, cook, anything like us, man? No. You above everybody on this earth, man. And we got to come back to our nationality and understand who we truly are and walk like it. We got to love one another, take care of one another, prefer one another. You understand what I'm saying? To separate from these other nations because they ain't got no love for you, man. They ain't got no love for you, man. The Lord has always had a distinction and a separation between nations, man. You can be respectful to them. Don't be evil to them. Yeah. But, man, hey, man, prefer your own people, man. Love your own people, man. And come back and keep commandments of the Most High God, man. And learn how to serve Him in righteousness, man. Because that's how you love God, by keeping His commandments. That's the only way you show God you love Him. By believing and keeping His commandments. Having faith and keeping the commandments. That's the only way you're going to make it to heaven. That's the only way. And heaven is a rulership on earth. That's right. Right? That's what heaven is going to be. Heaven is a rulership. Right? So we have to get back to that commandment, uh, keeping the commandments of the Most High God so we can get back to the top. Right? So that's what we're going to do. We have to run that damn crack out. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, man, you know, how y'all doing, family? This for y'all too, man. Y'all got a couple minutes to hear these words real quick. All praise to the Most High, man. Right? So we were telling the brother, man, as we royalty on this earth, man, we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, man. You understand what I'm saying? So we got to remember that. Well, you got something? Go ahead, read it. This book of Revelation, chapter 5, and verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Where? On the earth. Right, so the Lord said, man, we kings and priests, and we're going to reign on the earth, man. Our rulership is coming. This world is falling. Y'all see the dollar is dropping. You know, people starting to uh, uh, take away the dollar, you know what I'm saying, and make their own currencies. World War III is on the rise. You know what I'm saying? You got different, all kind of aspects to show you that this world is collapsing. America's got to be finished. Right. And this place is going to be blown up by thermal nuclear fire man, That's right. in World War III. And if we don't get right as a people, Christ is not going to come back and save us. Man. 
we're gonna be left here with our oppressors and we're gonna be destroyed, man. So we gotta come back as a people, man, and come together, right, as a collective and love one another, man, or we will be destroyed, man, as they, right? Get one more, get that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, Ye are gods. I have said, Ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. So the Lord said, You are God on this earth, man. You are God too on this earth, man. You are princess on this earth, man. Give me Psalm 52. Right? The Lord said, man, we royalty on this earth, man. We gotta start walking like it, acting like it, man. And the only way we can do that is start keeping the commandments, right? So I'm gonna give y'all a commandment real quick before y'all leave out too. And I'm gonna read this for you, little sister. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 2. Out of Zion, the profession of beauty. What the Lord say? Out of Zion, the profession of beauty. Right? God had Zion. So the Lord said, out of Zion, out of Israel, is the perfection of beauty. Right? Because our sisters, man, you are the standard of beauty on the earth. All these other nations, the white, the Japanese, the East Indian, all that, they want to look like you. They want right. to have that beautiful crown on their head, too, like you do. That's right. You know what I'm saying? They want to walk like you. They want to talk like you. They want to have their tan like you got. All of that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the Lord said, out of Zion, or out of Israel, is the perfection of you, man. This people is beautiful. We're perfect in the sight of the Most High, man. Can't nobody do what we do. Right? They can't hold a candle to what we do, man. Think about it. You have Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Mike Tyson, man, Little Lang, whatever, anybody that you can see, LeBron, anybody, man. Can't nobody do what we do, man. That's we right. just that, think about it, a world without black men playing in the NBA or in the NFL or in the music industry. What type of world would that be? It'd be tough. It'd be super bland. The Lord said we are the salt of the earth, man. We give everything flavor, right? But if we lose our flavor, how are we going to salt it, man? We're supposed to 